systemic racism, rich, out-of-touch white people, and the black folk who love them. We're not talking about Fox News correspondents covering issues of race. This is Get Out. Get Out is a 2018 horror film written and directed by Jordan Peele. You all know Jordan Peele from the Key and Peele show. Most recently, he also has done the movie Us and the new Twilight Zone show reboot. The film was produced by Bloomhouse Studios, who I love. I think Bloomhouse is helping horror make a big comeback, and I really appreciate that. The film stars Daniel Kaluuya. I love Daniel Kaluuya. I think he's a great actor. You all know him from Black Panther, Black Mirror, and Widows. It also stars the incomparable Bradley Whitford. You'll know him from Cabin of the Woods, Destroyer, and most importantly, Billy Madison. It also features up-and-comer Allison Williams, whom you'll know from Peter Pan Live. I'm going to be honest, <laughs> I don't know what Peter Pan Live is. Catherine Keener from Synecdoche, New York, being John Malkovich and the 40-year-old virgin also stars in the movie. The premise of the film is very simple. A woman brings her man home to meet her parents. The only thing, he is a black guy, and not everything is as it appears to be. So as you guys know, when I talk about movies, I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. There is nothing ugly about this film, so I'll just be talking about the good and the bad. That being said, let's get to the good. <laughs> The movie has a fantastic introduction that really gets you hooked, and that's for a couple reasons. First of all, it features the amazing Lakeith Stanfield. Second of all, it's one long take, it's really tense, it's really cool, and some stuff happens that you don't see coming, and I love being surprised in a movie, as you guys know. And even though it's one long take, the framing of it, the lighting of the scene, it just looks flawless from start to finish. And for me, that really goes for the rest of the movie, the cinematography, you know, the, the framing, the blocking, the, the setups, the lighting, everything just looks so good. Even the color grade looks awesome. A lot of movies will have great cinematography, but then they kill it in post and make it just look like doo-doo. Gregory Plotkin's editing in this movie is just kick ass. When it needs to be fast and frantic, it is. When it needs to be slow, methodical, intense, it is. This guy really knows how to cut a movie, and he really cut this horror movie very well. Especially when you take in the fact that it has these lighthearted notes and these weird moments too, so it could definitely be screwed up in post. And a lot of that lightheartedness comes down to little Ray Howery. This dude is so funny. Of course, the writing was really good. It was really funny as well. It was awkward. It was a little weird. And that was how it was supposed to be, and it comes out great. In the hands of a lot of other actors, no matter how good the material is, it definitely could have been screwed up, and this dude just nails it. Just like he did in The Bird Box. He was one of the highlights of The Bird Box movie, even though he wasn't in it for that long. I also really like his point of view in this movie. He's kind of the voice of reason, and you know he sees a lot of things that maybe other people don't see, just like he did in Bird Box. And that's probably why he was cast for Bird Box, because he kills in this movie. The chemistry between Daniel Kaluuya and Allison Williams actually comes off pretty genuine. They do make a great on-screen couple. There's a lot of great banter that comes off naturally, some of the looks, you know, a lot of things that happen with real couples, they do it, and like I said, it feels legit. And of course, that's very important because the whole premise of the movie is a loving couple going to spend time with the girlfriend's parents. So if that relationship doesn't feel genuine, the rest of the relationships, the rest of the movie is not going to feel genuine. But the subtle, slow building tension is really the highlight of the movie, whether it be done through music or long takes or these slow zoom ins, you know, it really, really does this, this great combination of all these things to build tension. And some of the stuff that it does with it is so simple and it makes you wonder like what's going on in the scene. And then you start to notice little details that pop out because you have time to look at that shot. It doesn't rush, you know, it lets you rest in there and you get to see around things. And that's really important. And what's funny is a lot of these moments that feel really tense are everyday, normal, like mundane activities, you know, driving, you know, meeting the parents for the first time, stuff that it wouldn't feel tense or stressful in any other movie, but it feels that way in this one. I really enjoy the way that this movie threads comedy and horror and drama and romance all into this really unique tapestry. It really doesn't feel like anything else I've seen in a very, very long time. And one of the things that really helps set this movie apart is all of the little touches. And what I mean by little touches, tons of really unique close-ups, but stuff that really matters because so many movies now, they just use close-up after close-up and they don't mean anything because that's just how they shoot pretty much the whole film. 
But in this one, when they do close-ups, it's for a reason. And some of them are very unique. Some of them are spooky, some of them are funny. And on top of that, they use a lot of great musical cues and real subtle background music to enhance these little moments. The whole family in general has kind of a really weird vibe to them from the start, but the person who really stood out like on their first impression was the brother, Jeremy. He's just super weird and his performance is so effective. It's really disconcerting basically from the first time you see him before he even says anything. And a lot of that too has to do with the costume design and the makeup of the film. It's really subtle, but it really separates each character from one another. And one of the things that I thought was so cool about the movie is the way that it makes racial issues part of the horror. And they don't feel like they're thrown in there just to like appease black audiences, you know, and give them a horror film that they've been waiting for or whatever. They feel authentic and it's integrated very well. There are some pretty great scares in this movie and they build up. Even if you see something that's coming and you know what's gonna happen, uh, it really freaks you out and it's super effective. It really scared the shit out of me a couple times. So much so that after I laughed a lot, but it was that nervous laughter, like Jesus, that's pretty good. They got me pretty good. Everyone in this movie just kills it performance wise. The acting in this movie is stellar. Whether it be the people in the main leading roles or some of the you know side characters and stuff like that. Even though they might have just a minute or two, they really shine on screen. But I really enjoyed Daniel Kaluuya's performance and Lakeith Stanfield's performance. Lakeith Stanfield's not in here for very long, but man, he really knocks it out of the park. But then again, he always does. He's really good. But Daniel Kaluuya, man, ever since I saw him in Black Mirror, I've been really impressed. And every time I see him in a movie, I get excited because I know I'm going to see something special. Some of the sequences in this movie aren't made to scare you. I feel like they're made to really bring you into the world, to make you uncomfortable, and to just give you more questions and get you freaked out and wondering what the hell is going on. And one of those sequences is the sunken place sequence. I won't say too much about it. There's a reason that so many people use it for parody. There's a reason that so many people used it, you know, as reference in their other artwork. It really stands out. It's really unique. And I think it looks really cool. They really keep you hooked. They really keep you interested. They really keep you off balance. I can't imagine somebody watching this and getting like a third of the way through or halfway through and saying, ah, I don't feel like watching this anymore. To me, like it had its hooks in me and I had to see what was going to happen. I was really wondering what the reason for certain things was. And it has a pretty cool payoff. There is this one scene where a bunch of people are at a gathering. It's so weird. It's so weird, man. Just the stuff that people say, it's super uncomfortable. Uh, it definitely gets its point across. It's hilarious. It's, it's freaky. Uh, and it really sets up the rest of the movie. You don't know that's what it's doing, but man, it's classic to me. The music, just the sound editing, the sound design in general in this movie is great. You know, there's parts where the sound almost drops completely out or where stuff happens and it's really loud all of a sudden. It's really effective. And I know I keep saying it's really effective, but that's this movie. This movie is so goddamn effective in everything that it tries to do. It really threw me off when I saw it. I didn't see it uh, for like a year after it came out. Uh, this is the first time I watched it and that's why I'm so impressed and all my friends are like you got to see it You got to see it. So finally I just carved out the time and I'm glad that I did So the reason all this really weird stuff is happening the reason that people are acting way off and Saying these really uncomfortable things. It's really interesting. It's really creative and it's not uh, something that you see coming it really surprised me I'm still trying to figure out if I liked it if I didn't like it you know, there were certain parts about the reveal and what it was that I felt like were a little forced, but they still really worked. So it's one of those movies where you have to kind of think about it afterwards still uh, to really process a lot of what happened. And around the time that all of this stuff is happening and you figure out why people are acting so weird and everything else, it takes a really big turn really quickly and it's just fucking awesome. I loved it. It gave me something that not a lot of horror movies have given me in a long time. And that's a satisfying conclusion. Not the ending, but like wrapping up the climax and things that happen in it. And what happened to certain people and what certain people do. Man, it's just so satisfying. It feels so goddamn good. You know, when you watch a lot of horror movies, the first two acts will be great. And that third act kind of just lets you down. Especially the endings. Finally, this horror movie gives me a great ending. Something that I was excited about. And all the way up until, you know, right before the last couple shots, you're still wondering what's going to happen. You know, is this person going to make it? Is this person not going to make it? And it really ties it all up nicely, which made me happy because horror movies 
man, horror has just been my favorite since I was a little kid. You know, when I saw Chud and Return of the Living Dead in the early 80s. Yes, I'm that old. I'm 42. So I've been a huge horror fan for a long time. And one of the things that consistently happens in horror movies, like I said, is the ending sucks. This ending is awesome. So that's what I thought was good about the movie. Let's talk about the bad. While Daniel Kaluuya's and Ashley Williams' chemistry is really good and they come off as a legit couple, their kissing is really awkward and it's gross and it's kind of hard to watch. It's really stiff and it's like, I don't know, man, it's just like two pieces of meat mashing into each other. It's like the kissing scenes in The Bodyguard, the Netflix show Bodyguard. This is probably the most awkward like kissing I've seen since that and that says a lot. The movie's really great at building tension and keeping this constant sense of dread going. So that's why when they did these couple of kind of cheap jump scares that really had nothing to do with anything, they come out of the blue and they don't lead to anything else. I felt like they were cheap and it was almost like they were trying to cater to the younger people in the audience who maybe don't appreciate the tension as much. So the jump scares definitely were needed and they felt really out of place. There's a couple points in the movie where the ADR or the voiceover, whatever you want to call it, is, is really off. Uh, you can tell that it was said later on, you know, in post, because maybe the audio wasn't that good, or maybe they said their line wrong, or maybe they changed the line for some reason, but it really stands out from the rest because the audio design, like I said, and the, the, the mixing, the mastering, whatever, is so great. So these couple times when you hear these lines, you're just like, oh. And I think that's because there's a lot of points in this movie where it gets so quiet, not the, the music or whatever, but the dialogue you have a really hard time hearing what some of the people are saying to the point where I had to turn the TV up to 100 just to hear those lines. There are a bunch of twists in this movie. Most of them will catch you off guard. You'll really enjoy them. They'll delight you, all that good stuff. But there is one pretty big twist. It's not really a twist. You definitely see it coming from a mile away. If you've read any decent amount of horror novels or seen a bunch of horror movies, you're going to see it. You know, And there's a couple of things that kind of hint to it if you're paying attention. So... It gives away, you know, what it's going to do, but, you know, it still does it well. There are a few moments of violence in the movie. They're there for a reason. They really make you feel good when they happen, but they are hampered by them trying to play it too safe. They don't show enough of the blood, the gore. They don't show, you know, the, the strikes or things puncturing or anything like that. And I think if they showed that, it would have more of an emotional payoff. I know I say that in a lot when I'm talking about action or horror, anything with violence and gore. But that's because it's true. You know, if, if you shy away from something, if you cut away from it, then it's obvious that you're just trying to take it easy on the audience or trying to keep your rating at a certain level. The thing about it, when it happens in this movie, you really want this cathartic payoff. You want to see him get back at people who were doing certain things. And when he has the chance, you don't get to see it like you want to see it. So it doesn't have that emotional payoff that like, oh yeah, get them motherfuckers. But honestly, that's it for the bad. This movie was that good that there's only those couple things and they're really just nitpicks. All that being said, what is my score? Drum roll, please. Eight out of 10.